This is truly an historic day here in Jersey City. A 27-year-old Negro named Jackie Robinson is playing his first game for the Montreal Royals, the Dodger Farm Club. Robinson steps to the plug. Here's the pitch. Swing it! In 1947, when Jackie Robinson broke baseball's color barrier, the sport was America's pastime and its passion. Before integration, African American players were regulated to the Negro Leagues, a league of all black players that produced some of the best talent the game has seen. Some of these players eventually got a taste of the major leagues, but most of them did not. Some of the names have become legendary and others have become more lost with time. This is a lesson to educate you about some of these players in the words of their contemporaries. Cool Papa Bell. Cool Papa Bell was so fast, he could get out of bed, turn out the lights across the room, and be back in bed under the covers before the lights went out. Josh Gibson. Once he hit a line drive right past my ear, I turned around and saw the ball hit him in his ass, sliding to second base. Satchel Page. Oscar Charleston. Charlie was a tremendous left-hand hitter who could also bunt, steal 100 bases a year, and cover center field as well as anyone before him or since. He was like Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, and Tris Speaker rolled into one. Buck O'Neill. Oscar Charleston was the Willie Mays of his day. Monty Irvin. Leon Day. He threw his heart and was as competitive as Bob Gibson. When he pitched against Satchel Page, Satchel didn't have an edge. You should have seen Day. He was the most complete ball player I've ever seen. If we had one game to win, we wanted Leon to pitch. Monty Irvin. Judy Johnson. Judy Johnson was the smartest third baseman I ever came across. A scientific ball player, did everything with grace and poise. Ted Page. Smokey Joe Williams. Everyone wanted to be Joe Williams on the sandlot. We argued about who could be Smokey Joe. Josh Johnson. Williams was over 50, but could still throw 100 miles an hour. I had to put a beefsteak in my glove when I caught him. Double duty Radcliffe. Hilton Smith and Ray Dandridge are a couple of players who made stops in Minnesota. Smith playing for the Folder amateur team, and Dandridge, who mentored Willie Mays with the Minneapolis Millers. How I wish people could have seen Ray Dandridge play third base. As good as Brooks Robinson and all of those, he was bow-legged, a train might go through there, but not a baseball, Monty Irvin. Hilton Smith, he had one of the finest curveballs I ever had the displeasure to try and hit. His curveball fell off the table. Sometimes you knew where it would be coming from, but you still couldn't hit it because it was just that sharp. He was just as tough as Satchel Paige, Monty Irvin. The most recognizable names are a group of men whose tails have become legendary and are some of the most respected players in all of baseball. The great power hitter, Josh Gibson, who famously said, when I come to the plate, I'm always in scoring position. Josh Gibson. I played with Willie Mays and against Hank Aaron. They were tremendous players, but they were no Josh Gibson. Monty Irvin. He can do everything. He hits the ball a mile, he catches so easy, he might as well be in a rocking chair. Throws like a rifle. Too bad this Gibson is a color fella, Walter Johnson. Josh was a better power hitter than Babe Ruth, Ted Williams, or anybody else I've ever seen. Anything he touched was hit hard. He could power outside pitches to right field. Shortstops would move to left field when Josh came to the plate. Alonzo Boone. The face of the Negro Leagues was Satchel Paige. Bob Feller, Ted Williams, and Joe DiMaggio all said he was the best pitcher they had ever saw. Paige's peers agreed. Satchel Paige was the toughest pitcher I ever faced. I couldn't do much against him. All these years I played there, I never got a hit off him. He threw fire. Buck Leonard. Talented and talkative, Satchel has some of the greatest quotes of all time. I never rush myself. See, they can't start the game without me. It's funny what a few no-hitters do for a body. I never threw an illegal pitch. The trouble is, once in a while, 
I toss one that ain't never been seen by this generation. Jackie Robinson only played one season in the Negro Leagues, but it was an important one and a vital stop on his way into history. Jackie Robinson. Jackie's character was much more important than his batting average. Hank Aaron, Hall of Fame outfielder. His character was the main reason he became the first. I'm not concerned with you liking or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. With millions of other Negroes in other walks of life, we are willing to stand up and be counted for, for what we believe in, in baseball or out. We are no longer willing to wait until Judgment Day for equality. We want it here on earth as well as in heaven. Anytime any individual, black, white, yellow, green, doesn't make any difference skin color, is willing to sacrifice to achieve better opportunities for his people, then I support it. Perhaps the greatest spokesperson for the Negro Leagues was Buck O'Neill. He was poetic, pragmatic, and right on point. Buck always had a unique way of looking at things. His stories and memory added credibility to some of the legendary players. And some of his tips for life are still relevant today. They help reinforce history and the importance of remembering our past. Buck O'Neill. Don't let anger boil up inside you. There's too much hate out there already. Listen to old people tell stories. You just might learn something. Hold hands with the person next to you. That way they can't get away, neither can you. Learn your history. It's a wonderful history. So many wonderful things have happened in the last hundred years. We have come so far, but we still have a way to go. But that's your job, you and your children, and their children. We will get there. I know it. People like me and my good friend Kirby Puckett are proof that the game has come a long way. And we're thankful for the players that paved that way.